Welcome to Biology at Ease. This video is part 7 of Life Processes lecture series. In my previous video, I explained the process of excretion. Now, in this video, I'll be explaining the process of control and coordination. While studying the process of control and coordination, we often use a term which is called stimulus or stimuli. This stimulus refers to the change in our environment to which an organism responds or reacts. For example, when you accidentally touch a hot utensil, you quickly pull away your hand from that utensil. So this hot utensil or the heat from that hot utensil is the stimulus or the change in the environment. And the pulling away of your hand is the response created with respect to this stimulus. So this stimulus plays a very important role in control and coordination process. What is coordination? Coordination is the working together of various organs of an organism to produce a systematic response to a particular stimuli and for coordination to occur a certain form of control is required in our body so this is what control and coordination means the process of control and coordination takes place in both plants as well as in animals in plants hormones are responsible for control and coordination whereas in animals besides endocrine system that is the system of hormones there is one more system which controls control and coordination and that is known as nervous system which is a system of nerve cells so in plants hormones are responsible for control and coordination whereas in animals nervous system as well as endocrine system are responsible for control and coordination now let's see how control and coordination occur in plants so as I have discussed in plants hormones are responsible for control and coordination these hormones which are responsible for control and coordination in plants are known as phytohormones and they are of four types auxins Gibberlins, cytokinins and abscisic acid which in short is known as ABA. Auxins, gibberellins and cytokinins are growth promoting hormones that is they promote the growth of the plant whereas ABA that is abscisic acid is growth inhibitor or it is a growth inhibiting hormone. Auxins in plants promotes cell enlargement, cell differentiation and the growth of the fruits of the plant. Gibberellins is also a growth promoter and it promotes cell enlargement as well as cell differentiation but only in the presence of auxins. Gibberellins also promotes the growth of fruits and plants as well as it helps in breaking of dormancy in seeds and birds of a plant. What is dormancy? Dormancy is an inactive stage or resting stage of the plant in which the parts of the plant are not active at all. So gibberellin is the hormone which breaks this resting stage in plant so that that part of the plant which was earlier in the resting stage can again start growing. So gibberellin is a growth promoter which helps in breaking the dormancy in seeds and birds of a plant. Cytokinins promote cell division, breaking dormancy in seeds and birds, fruit growth. It also helps in opening the stomata of the plant and it also helps in delaying the process of aging in the leaves of a plant. So these are the growth promoters, auxins, gibberellins and cytokinins. There is one growth inhibitor in plant which is known as abscisic acid. This abscisic acid promotes dormancy in seeds and birds of a plant which means the function of the abscisic acid is just opposite to the function of gibberellins and cytokinins because they helps in breaking the dormancy in the plants whereas abscisic acid promotes the dormancy in plants. Besides promoting dormancy in seeds and birds, abscisic acid also helps in closing of stomata of the leaves of the plants as well as it is responsible for the falling of leaves in a plant and the process of falling of leaves is known as abscission and that is why this hormone is known as abscisic acid. So this is all about the plant hormones. There are four types of plant hormones, auxins, gibberellins, cytokinins and abscisic acid. Auxins, gibberellins and cytokinins are growth promoters which means they helps in promoting the growth of different parts of the plant. Abscisic acid is a growth inhibitor which means it inhibits plant growth. Now let's see the different types of movements which takes place in a plant. 
plants respond to stimuli by slowly growing and this slow growth of the plants is sometimes so slow that you cannot observe it immediately. Now, since plants are immobile, they cannot move from one place to another. So they show growth by movement of their body parts. These growth movement in plants are of two types, tropism and nasties. Tropism growth movement is also known as tropic movement and nasties growth movement is also known as nastic movement. Now what is tropism? Tropism is the type of growth movement in plants in which the stimulus determines the direction of the growth of the plant. Nasties or nastic movement is the type of growth movement in plants in which stimulus is not responsible for determining the direction of plant growth. Now let's start with tropism. There are five types of stimulus which give rise to to five type of tropisms. The first stimulus is light and the tropism produced in response to light is known as phototropism. The tropism produced in response to gravity is known as geotropism. The tropism in response to chemicals is called chemotropism. Tropism in response to water is known as hydrotropism and the tropism produced in response to touch is known as thigmotropism. Now when tropism or the growth movement in plants occurs in the direction of the stimulus, it is known as positive tropism. Whereas, when the growth movement occurs opposite to the direction of the stimulus, it is known as negative tropism. Let's take an example of phototropism. In case of phototropism, the stimulus is light. Now, you must have seen that the stem always grow in the upper direction that is, in the direction of light. So we can say that the stem of a plant shows positive tropism whereas the roots always grow in the downward direction that is opposite to the direction of sunlight. Therefore we can say that roots of a plant shows negative tropism. So the growth of the stem of a plant is positive tropism whereas the root growth in plants is an example of negative phototropism. Now let's move to gravity. When the stimulus is gravity the tropism is known as geotropism. Now the direction of gravity is always in downward direction and since roots always grow in downward direction we can say that roots show positive geotropism whereas stems move in upward direction so stems shows negative geotropism. Taking an example of chemicals, when the stimulus is chemical, the tropism is known as chemotropism. Now, the flower part of a plant contains two reproductive organs. The female reproductive organ is known as ovule, whereas the male reproductive part is known as pollen tube. The growth of the pollen tube of a flower region of a plant towards the ovule is an example of positive chemotropism because the pollen tube always moves in the direction of the ovule. Since ovule is surrounded by a sugary chemical substance, the pollen tube always grows towards ovule. So it is an example of positive chemotropism. When stimulus is water, the type of tropism is known as hydrotropism. Root Roots move in the direction of water. Wherever water is available, roots move in that direction. So the movement of the roots of a plant is an example of positive hydrotropism. And at last, when the stimulus is touched, the type of tropism is called thigmotropism. You must have seen in a grape plant, tendrils are present. What are tendrils? Tendrils are the thin stem-like structures which arises from the stem part of a plant. These tendrils need some support for their growth and when the tendrils come in contact with a support like a wall or a piece of wood, the tendrils grow in the direction of that support. Since contact is necessary between the tendrils and the support, that is why it is an example of thigmotropism and since the growth of the tendrils is always towards the support so the growth of tendrils is an example of positive thigmotropism so this is how tropic movements occur in a plant now let's move to nastic movements 
nasties or nastic movement refers to the growth movement in which the response produced by the plants does not depend upon the direction of the stimulus and that is why nastic movement is also known as non-directional movement of plants nastic movements is of two types thigmonasty and photonasty thigmonasty is the type of nastic movement which is produced in response to touch so in case of thigmonasty the stimulus is touch in case of photonasty the stimulus is light which means photonasty nastic movement is produced in response to light now let's understand thigmonasty you must have seen the sensitive plant mimosa pudica which in common language is known as touch me not plant and in hindi it is known as chui mui when you touch the leaves of mimosa pudica the leaves immediately gets folded up so this immediate folding up of leaves is the response created in response to touch now what is the reason behind this folding up of leaves at the base of the leaves of mimosa pudica plant there is a pad like swelling which is known as pulvinae in pulvinae large number of cells are present and these cells contain a lot of water now when you touch the leaves of mimosa pudica plant the water present inside the cells of pulvinae gets released into the spaces present between the cells so this loss of water from the cells of pulvinae which is present at the base of the leaves of mimosa pudica is the reason behind folding up of leaves so that is why on touching the leaves the leaves immediately gets folded up let's move to photonasty photonasty is the nastic movement produced in response to light in case of dandelion flower the petals of this flower gets opened up when there is bright sunlight whereas at night these petals gets closed since this opening and closing of the petals of dandelion flower takes place in response to light it is known as photonasty and this response does not depend upon the direction of the stimulus that is the direction from where light is coming it is only the presence or absence of the stimulus that is the presence or absence of light which decides whether the response will be produced by the flower or not so this is all about the nastic movement now let's see how coordination occurs in animals the process of control and coordination in animals takes place with the help of two types of organ systems nervous system and endocrine system nervous system is a system of nerve cells which is also known as neurons whereas endocrine system is a system of hormones in simple multicellular organisms like hydra the endocrine system is absent which means in simple multicellular organisms hormones are not responsible for control and coordination in such animals only nervous system controls the process of coordination whereas in higher organisms like in human beings both nervous system as well as endocrine system controls control and coordination process now in case of higher animals like human beings there are five types of sense organs eyes ears nose tongue and skin these sense organs contain cells or group of cells which are known as receptors the receptors are responsible for sensing the change in our environment the receptors present in eyes are known as photoreceptors which detect light in ears phonoreceptors are present which detects change in sound nose contains olfactory receptors which detect smell tongue contains gustatory receptors which detects taste and skin contains thermoreceptors which detects heat and cold these receptors sense the energy of the stimulus and at these receptors the energy of the stimulus gets converted into electrical energy which is known as nerve impulse or impulse this impulse with the help of sensory nerve is transported to brain and spinal cord in brain and spinal cord a systematic response is created and in brain and spinal cord with the help of motor nerves the response in the form of electrical impulse is transported into another part of a body which is known as effector and effector is responsible for producing the response effectors are generally muscles and glands which produces the response let's quickly summarize everything receptors are the cells or group of cells which sense the change 
change in our environment that is which sends the stimulus at the receptors the energy of the stimulus gets converted into electrical energy which is known as nerve impulse this nerve impulse with the help of sensory nerves gets transported to brain or spinal cord inside the brain or spinal cord this nerve impulse creates a proper response this response again in the form of nerve impulse is transported to effectors with the help of motor nerves and these effectors then produces the systematic response to a particular stimuli so this is all about the process of control and coordination in animals i'll be explaining human nervous system in my next video if you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos thank you so much for watching